One of the benefits of the one-step method is it can be used when you stack multiple percent increase and decreases. For example, a sales price, a coupon, and then paying sales tax. The two-step approach would end up being at six steps total, but in the one-step approach, it's still just one step. So let me demonstrate the one-step approach on multiple percent increase, percent decreases. Okay, so we start off with a book that's $35. We have a 20% off sale that decreases one minus the percent decrease over 100. Next up, we have a coupon, 15% off the sales price, an additional 15% off, one minus 15 over 100. And then finally, we have a sales tax. This is an increase. This is one plus 6.25 over 100. So now we work this out with our calculator. I, actually, I want to demonstrate one other thing. If we simplify this a little bit, 1 minus 0 0.2 is 0 0.8. 1 minus 0 0.15 is 0 0.85. And 1 plus 0 0.0625 is 1.0625. A lot of you will be comfortable in jumping from the 20% off to that there's 80% left. 15% off, there's 85% left. And 6.25% increase, it's now 106.25% of the total. You don't have to do it that way, but that might help you understand the step a little further, and it might speed you up. So you can choose to Type in the previous expression or the simplified expression as I have now done it. Either way, you end up with one step, one equals the final answer. This one will have to be rounded because we don't have seven, five, I mean, hundreds of pennies and tenths of pennies. So this would be 29 cents. So the sales, the final cost of this book is $25.00 and 29 cents. All right, go ahead and work on problem 22 as you pause the video. You should end up with $163 and 80 cents. All right, next type of percent usage is the absolute and relative change. This can either be comparing one object over a time period or two objects at the same time. Absolute and relative change can be used. The relative change, you write it as a percent. And you can and often do get percentages larger than 100%. So that's not possible with the percent as the partial out of the total. That's the most 100%. These can be larger than 100%, and they can be negative, at least with many books, not this book. Absolute change has the same units as the original quantity. Relative change is always a percentage. So this book uses the absolute value for the absolute change. Many books do not. Using the absolute value, your answer will always be positive, and so then it's up to you if the values are going down to say it's a decrease or if it's going up to say it's an increase with English versus just with the sign in front of the number. Okay. So, new value minus old value. So the absolute change. This is a politician support increases from 39% to 59%. So, the new value is the after value, 59%, minus the original value, 39%, and that's just 20%. We can see it's going up. So, we would say this is an increase of, 
Now, we wouldn't say an increase of 20% because that's how we answer the relative change. This is an absolute change. So this is an interesting thing. If you're tracking percentages, then you actually refer to them as percentage points. Increase of oops, 20 percentage points. Because an increase of 20% is not the same as an increase of 20 percentage points. 20 percentage points, you just add 20 to the percentage. But increase of 20%, you actually multiply by 1.2, as we discussed in our previous topic. Okay, the relative change can be worked on with the formula but we can also use the absolute change over the original value times 100. And since we have the original value, uh, sorry, we, we have the absolute change, we can just go with 20% over the original value, which was 39% times 100%. So the percentage points, those units reduce, but we still get a percent for this problem. And our calculator gives us 20 divided by 39 and then multiply by 100. And now our rounding. The nearest tenth of a percentage or a percent. If they ask you for the nearest tenth of a percent, you have to get to the percent before you round. So make sure your rounding is your very last step. 51.3 will be our final answer. Approximately 51.3. And this is just percent, not percentage points. This is percent. And now this is an increase. Increase. You always have to tack on the word increase or decrease if you use the absolute change with the absolute values. Okay, pause the video and work on number 24. The answers to number 24 are a $6.25 per stock, or sorry, per share decrease. That's the absolute. And that's also a 26.04% decrease that's the relative change and the absolute change and the relative change